Good morning, good afternoon, everyone. Thank you very much for joining us today. And also a second thank you for those that gave some input to the content that we've seen today through the questions and the, the comments. We've really tried to build that into the content. Just a couple more housekeeping items. We have a poll this time, which is the first time that we're, we're doing that in, in our webinar series. Uh, so look out for that. And then in addition, as questions arise, just feel free to type them into the chat box. Uh, we're looking forward to engaging in that discussion at the end of the webinar. So let's get one thing out of the way right at the very beginning of today's session. No matter what I say today, where the discussion goes, how things appear, scaling is really hard. We all aspire to do it. We want to make next year better than this one. It's something that's really been bred into us. Uh, but just because we want to doesn't mean we can, because it's hard. And like most problems, you know, strategy and direction, it's extremely important. But oftentimes the devil's in the details. And that's why we chose the topic of this session today to focus on conveyance, and specifically conveyance and manufacturing. Because when business leaders are looking at their process, Conveyance is not generally the go-to item of discussion. It's a detail that is sort of left to those that are doing the work, doing the implementation. But that detail can have a really significant impact on the system. Because conveyance, whether it's throughout the factory or within a production cell, it's a lot like the transportation methods in a city. There's a lot of options available to you, but depending on the decision criteria and the constraints, there's generally only a few options that get the job done well. And just like a, a scaling and thriving city, people getting around, parts getting around is absolutely critical to that success of you know, a fully functioning city and, and something that's gonna grow and thrive. And like roads, when we're looking to scale, you, you have to have that plan and that strategy in place to line up the details. We've gotta line up our, our people, our process, our infrastructure. And when we do that successfully, that's when we achieve the growth that we're targeting. But if we miss on any one of those puzzle pieces, it's going to make the picture incomplete. And that's where the risk of failure increases. And what we'll talk about today is why that makes conveyance such an important piece of the manufacturing strategy. It touches everything. Therefore, it naturally impacts all of the pieces, your, your people, your process, your infrastructure. Conveyance shouldn't really be looked at as a detail. It's a fundamental decision about how we implement our plans and how we accomplish our goals. So just a little bit about me. My name's Simon Drexler and I'll be speaking today. I lead the Linear Motion Technologies Group within ATS and within our products group. I started my career at Toyota before I moved to ATS and I've held a variety of roles around the campus here in Cambridge, Ontario, Canada, as well as a few abroad. And then I've also been fortunate to get involved in the startup community and the innovation culture that exists in Waterloo, Ontario. Uh, as part of that, on top of my, my LMT role, I sit on the board of advisors for Canadian manufacturers and exporters. And I've been fortunate to win a few awards and, and be featured in a couple of TV spots, mainly around driving innovation inside of industry. It's something that I'm really passionate about. The best part of my career is that no matter the role that I've had, I, I've been really fortunate to, to meet with and travel to a number of customer facilities to really work directly with them to integrate technology and innovation to solve their business problem. And I'm looking forward to sharing some of that experience today as we talk about conveyance and scaling operations. Uh, so just very quickly, what are we, what are we gonna cover today? And this, we're gonna talk about how conveyance impacts the overall system design. And then we're gonna talk more specifically about the gates of scaling. Uh, obviously we wanna understand how we address those gates. So we'll, we'll talk about that in broad detail and then we'll focus in on an example of how we've been able to accomplish that. And then the real crux of today's discussion is, you know, how do we take what we learned today and build a better case for equipment investment? And then at the end, we'll, we'll open it up to questions and discussion. So like I said, if anything comes up, uh, please feel free to type that into the chat box. And so we're gonna start today 
uh, with our poll question. And that's, what are the major challenges that you face while scaling? And there's a couple of options here and then a write-in for the other. And I'm gonna ask Kali to put that up so that you can vote and we'll give maybe 15 or 20 seconds in order to have you make your choices. Yeah, we'll just give it a couple more seconds as the, the votes come in, and then we'll review the results of the poll later in the, in the discussion today. Good. Thank you to everybody who voted. Uh, we'll call close the poll, and we'll carry on. Uh, so just to get us all on the same page, when we talk about conveyance for the purposes of the discussion today, we really mean the movement of products from one location to another. And if we look at you know where my background is, where SuperTrack background, ATS's background, it's really inside of manufacturing and assembly processes that the, the target of the discussion will be today. And so conveyance is it's one of many dominoes. When we look at designing a system of any kind, there are a number of different factors that go into it. And that, that's clear right from the beginning. System design is complicated. And oftentimes in that complication, we really look at the destinations of where our products are moving and where the things stop and what the different processes are. And that's why conveyance is often one of the later dominoes that comes into that complicated system design. But what we'll see today, and what I hope to illustrate for you, is that conveyance should probably be one of the first dominoes that we look at in our system design, because it has a dramatic impact on a lot of the decisions that we make that impact our ability to scale both the operations and the business. And we'll walk through just a really high level example of a manufacturing system. Uh, so this is something that ATS designed to build for a customer. And we put together two concepts, uh, both equally valid, both have different trade-offs. On the left, you have a system that utilizes a dial table and a traditional conveyance system. And on the right, you have linear motion technologies with traditional conveyance. And without getting into any of the details whatsoever, what we'll see is that the system design will have a significant impact on the people, the process, and the infrastructure that works with these systems. So we don't need to know anything about what the system actually does to illustrate that point. And so if we start by looking at the people, you know, if you contrast the system on the left with the, the system on the right, we've selected different technologies and, you know, a foundation that is very different between the two approaches. And so that's going to impact the skill set and the training of the operators that work on that piece of machinery. So we'll have to show them either how to work with a servo dial table all the ins and outs of traditional conveyance or on the right with linear motion technology and um, traditional conveyance as well. And then it also has an impact on the maintenance that will happen on these cells, which is something that um, doesn't always get considered right up front in the system design. But because we've chosen different technologies, they're going to have different spare part needs, they're going to have different maintenance schedules and a different skill set inside the maintenance technicians as well. So. Then if we move to process the conveyance platform, it's going to impact the components that are in the system, and that drives the difference in the process as well. How quickly we can produce components and at what quality level is significantly impacted by the technology that's included in the system design. Just something as simple as how fast you can move parts is going to change what technologies are available for the application. And depending on the technologies that we choose to put into our system design, that affects the sequence of the part, sequence of the operation, and how quickly we can build them. So it affects the throughput as well. So then if we look at infrastructure, because the system and the technology choices are different, they all have different levels of capital expenditure because of the different products that we're choosing. But maybe more importantly, it's different amounts of space as well. 
And I say that it's probably more important around the space because as I've traveled, um, especially in North America, we're seeing a lot of manufacturing come back um, to be more local for local. And cat or space is becoming probably a more serious decision criteria than even the amount of, of invested capital because we're just trying to continue to do more with less as we bring things back to North America. But just with a, a very simple high level example, you can see that our choice in conveyance, you know, dial versus conveyor versus linear motion technology can have, to have a significant impact on our people, our process and our infrastructure. And those are the pieces that enable our strategy and inherently are responsible for our success and growth. Therefore, you can see that our choice and conveyance foundation is gonna affect our ability to grow. And too often we understate the impact of those details in our system design on our overall ability as a business and as an operation to, to achieve our growth plan. So let's take that common, common example, common understanding, and start to talk about how we might be able to overcome the barriers of, of scaling our operation or scaling our business. So people are the most common barrier that anyone I speak to in manufacturing raises. So the CME just did a, a survey in Canada, but it, it's true for the, the United States as well. And 85% of manufacturers today are struggling to fill vacant jobs. And that's as of 2019, the, the results just came out about a month ago. Um, and that's part of a well-known fact that many manufacturing jobs are gonna go unfilled in North America uh, from now through 2025. And that's part of a, an overall Deloitte study that's been done. So it's a well-known fact in our industry that we're gonna have a challenge getting this skill set and the people that we need to scale our businesses. But how, how can we help ourselves? We know that this is what the industry is dealing with. And for me, the answer is standardization. So standardization, standard practices and standardization have been proven time and time again to make our team more efficient. And that's the same for technology standards as well. If it's a fact that as manufacturers, we're gonna to struggle to find the people we need, we owe it to ourselves to make decisions that help us make our team more efficient as part of our strategy. And something that's come up a lot in my discussion with partners is that they have multiple facilities where standards would help them make their team more mobile. So not even more efficient, but they're able to transfer experts from site to site, depending on the projects or challenges that they're facing at any given time. And because standards really help to reduce complexity across the entire value chain is something where we can make our team more efficient. Because if we're talking just even about manufacturing components, it doesn't only make life easier on the manufacturing floor, it makes life easier for the designer, the supply chain, the operator, and those responsible for maintaining. Standardization comes with trade-offs, but the benefits of making our team more efficient in any of the, the processes that I've seen, they, they vastly outweigh any of the negatives when you look at the overall goal of scaling the operation. The second one is to our process, and, and this quote really resonates with me. Um, and that's that the rate of change today is the slowest that it will ever be. And that's impactful to me because things are changing really fast as it is today. And you hear a lot about technology and innovation and how it's driving so much change in industry that's you know, so much faster than it was 10 or 20 years ago. Well, that rate of change is only going to pick up. That we're experiencing right now the slowest rate of change that we will experience in our, in our lifetime. And that's something that I think is quite impactful to what we need to do and, and plan as a business. So if change is inevitable, especially in our space, you know, how do we combat that? And in my opinion, I really think that we overcome the pace of change through strong technology decisions. I think that technology choices really have the most substantial impact on our ability to change. And that's because we already know that we're gonna be short on people and the people resources that we have. So 
technology really has a great role in helping to steer our businesses. Technology can help us move faster, so increase the rate of speed on our, our production floor, but probably more importantly, really help to gather reliable information about our processes. And you know, that's a really maybe a subcomponent of the entire Industry 4.0 movement. Because the information would really help us and, and does help us to minimize the impact of change. When we really understand what it is that we're doing, uh, we can make better decisions to be less impactful to, to the process that we're trying to scale. And then finally, if we look at, at capital and infrastructure, the market conditions that we're currently in right now, um, you know, you, you read a lot about investors and investing in stock markets, but it, it's really no different for, for capital expenditure. You know, we're dealing with a lot of business risk and a lot of uncertainty right now. You know, investors, they, this is a quote from uh, Clyde Rousseau. So investors face a seemingly endless list of global risks. You know, we have escalating trade wars around the globe, high levels of debt across government, corporate and household, and a lot of political uncertainty. And that creates a market condition, which is, it leads to what you see on the screen, where the International Monetary Fund has just lowered the expected global growth in 2019 to 3%, which is the lowest rate since the financial crisis. And you know that the extension of that is, is being blamed for the reduction in investment in machinery and equipment. So again, if it's a fact, if it's a known fact that there's less capital available today than there was you know, a year ago or two years ago, how do we overcome that? And the best way to overcome that is by reducing the risk of our investment. And to make a growth strategy for our operations and equipment more attractive, we can show that we've taken these risks into account into the plan that we create. So in, in my experience, it's selecting things that can change and adapt to uncertain market conditions. You know, that inherently reduces a lot of the risk if you have some flexibility built into the process that you design and the system that you build. You also wanna make sure that the support is available for the technology choices that you're making. And then something that's relatively new for me, but is maybe a, a, a fairly straightforward concept of, is I've seen a lot of, of people and, and a lot of partners start to talk about the diversification of manufacturing equipment. And I think it's straightforward because, you know, as investors, you know, everybody's investing in their, their RSPs or their 401ks, and you want to diversify your investment portfolio. You want to minimize the risk. And so I, I've started to hear this concept of diversifying the equipment. And really all that means is that it's making multiple SKUs but you're diversifying your capital investment so that if one product takes off while another one fails, you're utilizing the same piece of equipment to do both. And that really reduce, reduces the risk of the capital expenditure. So to summarize, when we're looking at our puzzle pieces and trying to put together people, process, and infrastructure to support our growth goals, what we're really looking at doing is we want to deploy standards that enable strong choices in technology that reduce the perceived risk in capital expenditure. And, you know, that sounds so easy, right? <laughs> um, but let's look at an example where, where we've actually been able to achieve that uh, within ATS and, and within the SuperTrack team. And so this is probably one of my favorite examples of how conveyance can have a substantial impact on system design. So if you take the system on the left, it is fully functioning system, customer is very happy with it, you know, very stable, met all of the, the design criteria and the production requirements. But the challenge that this customer had is exactly the one that we're talking about today. They had to buy four more of the system on the left in order to meet their market demand. So when they launched a product, they were highly successful, and now they had to build a whole bunch more equipment. It's a great problem to have, but that doesn't mean that it's not still a problem. And the problem they had was that the building that they built this product in didn't have the space for four more of the original system. They didn't just have the physical space. So they came to us, they came to ATS, and they said, guys, you know, what, what can you do to make these systems a little bit smaller? So 
demand was pretty quick. So we looked at the system in the middle, the yellow system. We took all of the more low risk, more straightforward processes, and we changed the conveyance system. And by changing the conveyance system, we gave them a 30% floor space reduction and as well a 5% OEE increase because we were able to change the rate of production as well as change the buffering system between the two cells, which made the cells run a little bit more efficiently. So then they said, you know, guys, that's great, um, but it's, we still don't have space. We, we need another 10%. And so we went back and we looked, we took on a little bit more design scope, a little bit more engineering, and by taking the rest of the componentry and changing the conveyance method, so we're, we're moving from a traditional de design to, to a different conveyance approach, we saved another 14% of their floor space. And then if you look at the comparison between the blue system, the system on the left, and the green system, the one on the right, there's substantially less componentry in that system. There's less stations. Um, so the, the system actually got less expensive as we moved from left to right, so the capital expenditure got lower. And so why this story is so powerful is when you move from left to right, a fully functioning, you know, standard, great working automation system to the one on the right, we, by looking and changing the system design around the foundational conveyance, we were able to offer a 44% reduction in, in space, a 5% OEE increase, so increase in throughput, as well as a system cost reduction. And so no, every story isn't going to be like this one, but normally there is a subset of advantages that you get by looking at that conveyance foundation. And, and this example here really paints the picture of, of a home run. So let's talk a little bit about how we accomplish this, because again, the, the details are important. And so a tradition, this is just a really simple example, traditional conveyor, two stations, First station is a one second cycle time, the second station is a two second cycle time. And so traditional conveyance, you have fixed pitch, uh, generally fixed speed, and you're gonna index one product at a time uh, through your production stations. When we're starting to look at the system design, what's very common is that we include a buffer between the two stations. And that's usually because either the transfer speeds aren't high enough, or the accuracy of the transport speed or the motion isn't good enough for the, the actual cell. And so when we include a buffer like this, we now have two stations, so we have a space in between. So all of a sudden our system has just gotten bigger because of the limitations of the conveyance system. So now what would be common or our next step in the system design is, well, we've got a two second cycle time and a one second cycle time. We want the whole system to be one second. So now we require that buffer because of the limitation we need to get to one second, so we have to double up the two second station. But what we also have to do is double up both the buffer and the one second station so that we can accommodate the fixed index of a traditional conveyance method. And so now our system, which really only had two stations to begin with, we wanted to add a third so we could hit our, our one second cycle time. And now really has, it's taking up space of about six, six indexes. So, if you look at how we accomplished that 44% square footage reduction, this is how we did it. So smart conveyance allows individual control of the shuttles themselves. So you no longer have to design around the limitations of the conveyance system. Every station can have its own cycle time. And that allows us to only do the thing that we really needed to do for the system itself. So our goal is to achieve the one second cycle time. And all we had to do was double up station two we didn't have to double up station one because we could send two shuttles through the one second station, through station one, in the same time that we sent two through the second station, station two. So a second reason that we're able to accomplish that 44% square footage reduction is there's a significant reduction in part location and, and tooling at the station when you move away from traditional command. So, you know, very traditional approach here, shuttle moves in, uh, we actuate a pin, we lock the system into place, and then we perform our operation. Very, very traditional approach. But if you can utilize a conveyance system that's faster and more precise, you no longer need that locking pin. And, you know, when we talk about one specific station, it's a relatively trivial example. But when you're looking at a production cell that might have 10, 20, 30, 50 stations, if you can start eliminating your corner crowding tooling, your 
your locating pins and any of the features that you require for, for locking something into a precise location inside of your process, you eliminate a lot of space and you eliminate a lot of cost. And the final way that we were able to accomplish that 44% square footage reduction, OE increase and cost reduction is just the fact that you change the transfer times with a smart conveyance system. And so traditional conveyance, you kind of ramp up to a high speed, then you ramp down and you stop at the location. But smart conveyance systems that are on the market today, they're fully configurable motion profiles. You can get up to 4G acceleration, four meters per second velocity, and then you can actually do bi-directional operations as well which can enable some unique things to happen inside the process stations. But really what we're driving at is we want the parts to spend the minimum amount of time in transit. Transit is not value added time. We wanna maximize our, our process time. And smart conveyance is really an opportunity to do that. And this is how we achieved our 5% our OEE increase on the example that we talked about. So the choice in conveyance it's got a ripple effect on the rest of the machine. It impacts the tooling, the speed, and the space. And your tooling, your speed, and your space has a direct impact on your people, your process, and your infrastructure. And so to achieve our goal of scaling our operations, you know, you're looking at the fundamental technology choices and the fundamental design decisions that you're making in your system. And conveyance is the opportunity, or the opportunity exists inside of the conveyance portion of your system to make a choice that can help you more effectively utilize each of those puzzle pieces uh, that you have at your disposal to grow your operation and your business. So let's look at the results of the survey before we move into the next uh, portion of today. And so um, really came back, so about half of us are restricted by capital constraints. So because that's about half of us, we'll try to spend a little bit more time talking about that. 43% uh, of those on the call today said floor space uh, was their main issue. 30% said resource availability. Um, you know, if, if, I was, if I was guessing, I would have thought that would have been higher. 30% uh, resource availability. 22% is management approvals. Uh, so hopefully the next section of the discussion will help with that. And then 13% was regulatory uh, challenges. So again, that was 52% capital constraints, 43% floor space, 30% resource availability, 22% management approvals, and 13% was regulatory. So let's walk through each of those as we build up our business case for investing in new equipment and investing in a growth initiative. So the first one, it's resource availability. So about a third of us on the call today are, are impacted by that. And for the, the growth initiatives that I've seen and proposed, I think the target is really that our investment is going to drive efficiency with standardization. I think that's the most compelling case that we can make around resource availability. And if you come back to some of the facts and the quote that was in the, the presentation earlier, it's an inevitability we will be dealing with resource constraints. You know, again, coming back to the CME's um, survey, 85% of us are dealing with that today. There's 2 million jobs that are going to go unfilled in North America. It's the same throughout the world. So focusing on standardization, which drives efficiency of the resources, mobility of the experts within the company that we do have. So let's make our experts even more effective because we can move them around to different divisions and then simplicity of the actual process itself. You know, too common, you know, supply chain can look at the world from a supply chain perspective, maintenance looks at the, the job and the task from a maintenance perspective. You know, as the person proposing the growth initiative, we gotta look at that full value chain and say that standardization is gonna make things easier for us and efficient across the entire project that we're trying to do. So the big one, uh, capital constraints. So this is over half of us uh, are struggling with capital expenditure. And again, not a surprise given the market conditions that we're in today. And I think what we, what we really need to focus on around capital constraints is the perception of risk in the initiative. Uh, there was a quote that I didn't touch on, but a lot of times we can 
we confuse uncertainty with risk. And they're actually two different concepts. Um, but it doesn't really matter in the proposals that we put together because the perception is that they're the same. So the ways that we can reduce the risk of the initiative is make sure that the technology choices that we're making are redeployable. So redeployable, that's flexible technologies. It's the diversification of the piece of equipment so that it can build multiple products. Because if we're able to achieve that goal, then the, the investment in that piece of equipment is perceived, or the risk of the investment in the piece of equipment is perceived to be lower. We're always gonna to wanna to choose technologies that are reliable. Um, you know, that's almost table stakes, but it's important because we want a life cycle of, that's significant, five years or greater, uh, oftentimes 10 years or greater in a, in a capital expenditure. And then you wanna choose things that, there's both training and support available. So if you call back to the fact that people are going to be a main constraint, how do we support the people that we bring into the business? We might not always find that perfect person, but we might find someone who can come in and has the capacity to do what they need, but we gotta give them the tools they need to succeed. And so having a, a helping hand, having training available to them, having support needed when they need it is something that I think, or that I believe, and, and when I make these proposals is important that I highlight in, in what I'm trying to accomplish, because it just, it reduces the perceived risk in the investment of that capital. Floor space, um, you know, with floor space being at a premium, uh, it's almost like trying to put a strong man on an airplane in a lot of the factories that I go into. And, you know, it, it's a funny picture, but it is, it's kind of true. It, it's just, we're bursting at the seams in a lot of our facilities. And how do we deal with, with our floor space constraints? And, and this maybe more than all the other ones is about choosing the right technology. You can make technology choices that make the cells more efficient. And, you know, I walked through one example of that 44% square footage reduction, uh, but there are many others out there that if we, if we take the time and we choose the right foundational technology, that first domino in our system design that has that sort of ripple effect on all the other things that we choose, that's where we can really be more efficient and more effective with the floor space that we do have. And I would encourage you, you know, the, the manufacturers in the, in, on the call today, you know, really take a look at your process and look at the concept of maximizing every station. And inside your operation, have, have there been decisions that have made historically that with new technologies could be a little bit different? You know, have we doubled up stations that we don't need to double up? Uh, can we make a station uh, more diversified to maybe do a couple of different things? Are we able to implement some lean or some agile practices to make them more efficient? Uh, but really choosing the right, the right process and the right technology to enable that process is what will allow us to be more efficient with the floor space that we do have. Uh, so regulatory expert or regulatory issues. Um, so what I've found for dealing with regulatory uh, challenges, and I've worked across a number of different industries, a number of different technologies, and I've always tried that if, if I'm not the expert, if my team doesn't have the expertise, is find the right partner to work with. It, regulations and, and regulatory risks and challenges, uh, they, can be re they can be difficult, and they can be very de detailed and challenging to learn. Uh, so in the interests of, you know, dotting all I's, crossing all T's, and tackling this challenge in a, a reasonable amount of time, I, I would really recommend that you reach out to find the right partner in the space to work with. It's the, the best way to get over the, the regulatory challenges. And so I left the space here uh, just to talk about other mountains to climb because there was there was an other option, but there there are a number of other issues that you that you work towards and encounter when trying to scale the operation and the and the business. Rather than you know dialing in on any, any of them right now, that if there is a specific thing that you know you didn't have a chance to write in for others or um, it comes up as you're trying to build the business case, I'd be happy to to weigh in on it if you wanted to reach out you know after the after this webinar is over. But the final one, so 22%, is talking about initiative approval, so management approvals. And 
the best thing and the, the most significant recommendation I can make to you is always focus on the return on investment. And, you know, it sounds simple and it sounds straightforward, but ROI should be kind of at the focus, not kind of at the focus, ROI should be at the focus of choosing the right technologies, considering our capital resource, floor space, and regulatory requirements. Our return on investment is about achieving that growth. And that, that's what we really wanted to talk about today. So when we go in to do our proposal and our, our pitch for whatever growth initiative that we're trying to do, make sure that we touch on each one of the challenges that we've seen, you know, the, the capital constraints, the floor space, the resources, the regulatory. Talk about how that impacts your people, your process and your infrastructure and why the decision that we're making to take on this growth initiative helps each one of those buckets. Because if it helps each one of those buckets, our probability of achieving our growth target is significantly higher. And so just quickly, I uh, just wanted to touch on, you know, SuperTrack Conveyance is the product that enabled a lot of the stuff that we were talking about today. You know, it's a platform that really maximizes the production space on the floor, on the factory floor. And, you know, it does a, a number of different things, um, but more than anything, it, it's kind of enabled us at, at ATS and inside the SuperTrack team to have the experience to walk through how we put together a strong growth proposal for our, our business and our operations. You know, this product itself, we have over 500 deployments and, and 18 years in the market. You know, we have seen applications that are, are quite simple, straightforward manual processes all the way up to some of the most sophisticated automation on the planet. And being able to see all of those across a number of different industries gives us some pretty good insight into what's happening in different areas of the world and, and different industries in the market. Um, just in 2019, uh, we were fortunate enough to win the product of the year from Assembly Magazine, which we're quite proud of. And we were actually selected as the world's greatest conveyance technology uh, by a, a national television show out of the, the U.S. Uh, so something else that the team's quite proud of after working on the, on the product for so many years. And so what I would do is that if you're, if you're thinking about growing your business, if you're thinking about scaling your operations, and you think, based on the discussion today, that your selection of conveyance platform can help you, um, I, would, I would encourage you to reach out. Uh, I'll get to the, the contacts in a second, but reach out to the SuperTrack team. Like I said, we've got, we've got a number of years of experience of doing you know, simple all the way up through highly sophisticated, and we'd be happy to share our, our knowledge. And then as part of signing up for this webinar, when we send out the recording, we'll also actually send out a bit of documentation and a checklist for how you may want to think about your conveyance platform and some of the questions that you should ask when you enter into system design. And our, our team will be happy to help with that as well.